everyone, I hope you're doing so well and having an amazing week. And welcome to this little video, gosh, your extra squeaky chair, I do apologise. All about three burnt umbers and comparing three from different brands. Also, thank you so much for your amazing comments on my last video. And yes, this format may look different. I'm actually filming on my phone. It's so funny because ages ago, I turned my ring light upside down so that it could fit my DSLR on top of it. And now I've turned it upside down. The bit that holds the phone is like upside down, basically. So I had to like stretch it so it would fit my phone on and it would be straight. But it isn't straight. As you can see, it's completely wonky and I'm probably at an angle. So if I look like I'm at sea and you're feeling a bit seasick watching this, then I understand. So essentially, I hope you can see me. Technically, this should be better quality, actually, because even though my DSLR was my DSLR, this, um, you know, on your, when you film on your phones, definitely it's more compatible with like YouTube and things because my DSLR is actually quite old. So anyway, enough about that because it's just so boring. So let's start with, so funny because Burnt Umber is such a, in many ways, uninteresting colour to people who are looking at it from the outside, like perhaps who don't paint, probably think, why are you so fascinated with brown? I mean, it's just like brown. And, and you get uh, various different versions of Burnt Umber, but depending on the brand. So some brands, uh, their Burnt Umber is perhaps leaning towards violet a little bit sometimes they need a little bit cooler sometimes they need a little bit more towards red first i'm going to start with the cheapest out of the three so the first brand i'm going to talk about is windsor and newton here is the tube if i can hold it to the camera if the slight doesn't fail me which it probably will knowing my luck let's see if i can hold it oh god this is going to be difficult i'm going to turn the light down and um let's hope for the best Probably, there you go. It's, oh, it's almost happening. Um, I'll be in pitch black in a minute. There you go. This is the tube anyway. I feel like you can see it roughly. It's got the typical Windsor & Newton. There we go. The Windsor & Newton logo on it. Um, it has the, obviously, the strip of colour here that I'd say that that is actually pretty accurate. I do think it is slightly darker than this strip is showing. This strip, to me, it looks lighter than the colour actually comes out. So Windsor & Newton, a very famous brand, obviously, everyone knows it. Um, used to be, uh, the paints used to be made in England, in a factory in England, I believe, but they moved to France a while ago now. Some people have said that the quality has changed of the paint. Personally, I haven't seen that. I still think it's a great paint. It, as like all Windsor & Newton paints, it flows very beautifully. It's very, very easy to use. The binder in the Windsor & Newton paints are usually linseed oil, linseed and safflower oil combined, or safflower oil, so depending on which colour you're looking at. Obviously, um, for some, this is a big thing because to some artists, they prefer linseed oil as a binder. Linseed oil is a stronger, uh, forms a stronger film. However, of course, um, there are artists who are against it because they prefer different binders because linseed oil can darken a little bit or it can yellow sometimes. Usually it's actually the darkening that bothers people I think with linseed oil. Of course if you keep your paintings in a, like a dark space and you've used a lot of linseed oil in the paints and in the medium then you know obviously they can darken but then if you take the painting out and put it in the sunlight then it can sort of brighten up a bit more so you know there is a sort of you have to weigh out your options really. Linseed oil is the fastest drying binder and then you also get because there's a combination of safflower oil in some of these paints they will be a little bit slower drying than just having the straight linseed oil the benefit with having safflower oil as a binder is that it when it dries in my personal opinion it has a very bright look to it it has a very bright luminous look to the paint so if you like that type of thing you know many people enjoy safflower oil paints a lot a lot so it's very popular so this is a mix so it's not like it's really one or the other yeah so it's just something that you have to consider out of these three brands Winter and Newton is the more affordable one and also what's great about Winter and Newton is that it is available everywhere pretty much every art store will stock Winter and Newton so it's such an easy to get hold of brand it's a very easy paint to use one thing now I wanted to talk about is the price um Winter and Newton tend to be much more affordable they are an artist grade paint so you get artist grade and you get premium grade paints 
and of course you also get student grade. Now I generally don't recommend that people buy student grade, I feel like the pigmentation isn't ever really good enough to buy it. I always think just if you can spend a few pounds more and get the Winsor & Newton as opposed to say for example their Winton line which is their student line, um, still out of all the student lines that I've tried the Winton one is the best one. It's you're running about six to seven pounds in the UK for a Winsor & Newton tube of paint in a sort of standard art store. Next up we have Old Holland. Uh, oh, you can see this tube has been well used. It actually looks gross. I, I'm going to try and show you. Funnily enough this is actually focusing probably because it has kind of a matte finish to the tube. I actually read on some forum recently that somebody um, was obsessed with the tubes of Old Holland and found them the most durable, which is, they are durable actually, but that when they get to, like most paint tubes, when they get to sort of the stage where they're about to run out, they just, I mean, mine just looks crusty. And there's one thing that I dislike about Old Holland tubes, and that is this label always falls off. In fact, I have very few paints now, Old Holland paints, that actually still have this label on it, so I don't even know what colour it is from far away. I have to I have to like sort of dig them out and then properly read the label, it's just maddening. But yeah, so anyway, anyway, rant over. This is the absolutely famous Old Holland. So been established for hundreds and hundreds of years, the oldest uh, in terms of established brands there is. Super, super famous, super luxury, you're looking at pricey paints. Um, in terms of the earth colours though, they are a little bit more affordable. Once again, it really depends on which country you're buying the paint from, because obviously if you're in a paint, and you're ever in a paint, if you're in a country where um, the paint is actually being manufactured there, it tends to be cheaper. Not always, but it tends to be. It's funny because sometimes there are paints that are available in Europe, and it's actually, even though Europe is closer to us than to the US, sometimes those paints are actually far cheaper in the US than they are here, which is kind of interesting, even before Brexit. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny thing, but anyway. So yeah, so in terms of the earth colours, you can actually pick up in the UK an earth colour from Old Holland for about seven to eight pounds, which if you think about it, it's not a vast price difference. So people say, you know, Old Holland is so extortionate, but actually, you know, the price difference is not enormous. They, of course, if you're going for the pricier pigments, then you will be looking at a bigger price tag. Um, but in terms of like the earth colours, you can definitely pick up, you know, an Old Holland paint tube for something that is quite, I would say it's, it's fairly reasonable considering the quality. Uh, so yeah, considered to be the most pigmented, very stiff, the binder is linseed oil. It doesn't actually say unfortunately on the back, but on the website it does say it is linseed oil. I think for most of their paints, if not all, the binder is linseed oil. So um, if you're interested in linseed oil binder in paints, you would want to check them out. I definitely think if you're looking for different, um, to invest in sort of oil paints and things, you would definitely want to have a look at Old Holland because they're such, they have such a reputation. So yeah, I mean, it's worth trying because even though they are very thick, they are very unique in their pigmentation. Okay, finally we have the most expensive and that is Phlox. So here we go, very, very nice packaging. I'm a huge fan of the Phlox tube. Out of the three, um, I think the Phlox is my favourite. I do really like the Winsor & Newton actually. Funnily enough, the Winsor & Newton, they've changed the packaging. It used to be completely different and I think some people dislike it a lot because I've seen I've seen people sort of talking about it but I I personally don't mind it I like it I like it but um Blox is a, a really great looking tube this is a Belgian brand the binder in this paint pretty unique it's poppy seed oil there are a few other brands that use poppy seed oil off the top of my head I can think of uh, the French brand Chardin and the other brand is Mimeri Bordo. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, and that is another brand that uses poppy seed oil in the paint. And the reason being is that when you use poppy seed oil, the paint dries really luminous and really bright. I would say even more bright than safflower oil. Some artists argue that it is weaker. Um, it's a weaker sort of film former and that linseed oil paints last longer and are stronger. Of course, it all depends though, I think, on things like if you, if you use too thick paint or if you use too thin paint, your paintings are going to crack anyway, regardless of which paint you use, in my opinion. And I think that 
there are, because his brand's been established for so long, like Blocks, for example, has been established forever. <laughs> and so there were sort of artists who painted with these brands and they haven't had any cracking issues. One most notably being Dali. So of and decide for yourself, I guess. But one thing I really like about that type, this type of paint is that it has a really, it's a, got a really nice translucent quality to it. I feel like uh, the texture of this is almost like a gel. It's really fascinating, unique and very beautiful and luminous. And it's just, it's just such a nice paint to work with. So I'm going to show you what these paints look like and then you can decide. Oh, in terms of price, I'm not sure now, but when I bought it, I think it was about nine or ten pounds for this tube. Now, there could be sales, perhaps it's less now, but yeah, you are looking at a pricey paint, even for an earth colour. And some of their, you know, more expensive pigments are like, they're all really expensive. <laughs> So um, I don't have a ton of blocks, unfortunately, because of that. But, you know, it's just one of those things when you get a, you know, a brand that is pricey, you just have to, have to cry and buy a few paints that you can afford. Uh, one good thing, though, is that the premium brands, Old Holland and Blocks being the premium ones, uh, they do last a really long time. So you, you do have, you do, you do use less. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little video so far. I'm going to switch to my palette and we'll I'll ramble on about the texture of the paints and whether I think that they're worth buying because, you know, it all depends on what you're looking for in a paint and that makes a huge difference. So yeah. Hey everyone, so I'm just going to show you all, all the different burnt umbers in the, all their glory. I just want to quickly show you because I've just been working on this painting and um, I just wanted to show you that it is in this stage. <laughs> it's totally um, irrelevant to this video but anyway here we go. Guys here we go, here are the three burnt umbers. Incidentally the pigment number for all of them I believe is PBR7. PBR7, my <laughs> camera just went by there, uh, as expected. Um, so all the same pigment. I've actually done this in the wrong order, but anyway, let's go really close up so you guys can see. So here is the Blocks uh, Burnt Umber. Here is the Old Holland. And then at the end, we have the Winter and Newton. So most expensive to least expensive. Um, as you can see, they actually all look almost exactly the same here. Uh, but this one, the Winsor & Newton one, is more, I was going to say soggy, it's not more soggy, it's more wet. And the Old Holland is the thickest and the stiffest and the Blocks is probably the most translucent. So let's show you and hopefully it will show up on camera. See if I can pull this down. So I feel that with the Blocks you get the most sort of almost violet-y colour. I'm actually going to add some medium to this so you can see like how it pulls out with medium. There you can see, I mean, I personally think that this leans slightly, almost violet-y, um, reddish, the blocks. Next, we have the Old Holland. I'm going to drag this down if this camera can focus. Do you know, it's so late at the moment that the light is just not happening. Um, this one seems to drag a little bit smoother, but actually I find that the Old Holland does tend to be um, thicker. And that is just the case with Old Holland paints. But all you have to do is, with Old Holland, add a little bit of oil or medium. And actually then they're very workable. So now I'm going to add some medium to this and just watch it pull down so you can have a look. And there was no medium on my brush. Please help me. <laughs> See if I can do this. Properly, here we go. There we go. There's some medium. I will pull back and show this properly at the moment. I feel like the lighting is so so bad. I'm just gonna pull this out. Oh no, I'm gonna actually show you this right up to the camera so you can see like that. Uh, if I pull this paper, there we go. Um, so I don't know if you can see, but they're actually really really similar. But I do feel like the blocks one leans more reddish violety and um the old holland i feel like it's more brown and so finally we're going to go for the winter and newton i do feel the winter and newton is the most neutral so i'm just gonna pull this out now this doesn't need 
any medium. Can you see how easily this flows in comparison to the other two? Because obviously the other two have more pigment in them and that always means um, it's they're, they're more difficult to spread out. So you do generally tend to need to use a medium with them. Now I'm gonna add some medium just to show you. And actually what's really cool about the fact that the Winsor & Newton is so fluid is that it is really great for glazing. I would say that the blocks and the Winsor & Newton are great for glazing. So if you're into sort of glazes and the traditional methods of oil painting, then you would really want to go for those two. If you paint sort of um, more thickly or you paint a la prima, I would go for the Old Holland. Um, so yeah, you can see that this one pulls out really nicely. I feel like out of all three, the results are kind of like as expected. The Windsor & Newton, when you sort of drag it down, it's got more transparency and it's not as pigmented. Whereas these two are mega pigmented and obviously the Old Holland, even when you add medium, is by far the most pigmented. Um, again, it's just as you would expect because obviously Old Holland has that reputation for being the most pigmented. Um, but blocks is really, really strong as well. And as you can see, the color in the blocks is really evident. I think you can see better now. Yeah, the lights finally adjusted itself. You can see that there is a distinct color in the blocks one. It's like a, it's moving towards that warmth. Whereas um, I feel like the old Holland is pretty brown and then the Winter Newton is neutral. I don't feel like it leans either way. Even though when I, if you look at it in the glaze, it does look like it has a little bit more sort of, of a reddish tone, but I really do feel like it is actually very, very neutral. Um, when I use it, I kind of don't really see any other color apart from the sort of dark brown color. So yeah, so there we go. So that is the results. And if you ask me which is my favorite, um, the one I use the most, I actually really like all three of them and I don't have any criticism about all three. I think they are all wonderful. My absolute favourite is the Old Holland one because it is so pigmented. If I need to create a really dark brown tree, <laughs> then I just literally sweep that over and it just it creates that really, really dark um, tree root colour. It's that really dark, you know, rich earth that I really like um, but as you know a very close second is the blocks because I've used a ton of the blocks and I really like that one when I want that particular tone and I feel like it does remind me quite a lot of the oil colour Caput Mortem which um, is a really famous colour it's a historical colour and it, I feel like the blocks burnt umber it does lean towards that which is really interesting it's fascinating that it's sort of looks like that to me but anyway and yeah so both of those I think are excellent the Winsor Newton is also an amazing color very versatile as I say if you're into glazing I would get the Winsor Newton one because because it's um, a much weaker tinter it means that you can glaze till your heart's content and it will look great in layers so yeah those are my thoughts three great brands three great oil paints will you buy the cheap one will you buy the expensive and I have to say though Winter Newton isn't actually cheap. <laughs> so, so there we go. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video and take care guys.